Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for a special masterclass on why detoxing is critical for weight loss. We're so excited to discuss strategies for effective weight loss through detoxification, increased energy, and a healthier new year. My name is Nicole, and I'm the lead health coach here at Forum Health. And before we begin, I want to give you a brief introduction on who we are. Forum Health is the first nationwide provider of personalized health care that combines functional and integrative medicine with advanced treatments and technology, data analytics, and collaborative relationships. Our patients have exclusive access to breakthrough treatments, results-driven wellness programs, health content, and a team of nationwide experts to help you achieve your health and wellness goals. To learn more, visit us at forumhealth.com. Before we get started, I wanted everyone to know that we will be taking questions at the end of this class. If you have a question for Dr. Saxana about detoxing or weight loss, simply send us a message through the questions function in your GoToWebinar dashboard. Now onto our masterclass. Here to answer all of your burning questions is Forum Health's Chief Medical Officer and the founder of the GDRX Gut Detox Program, Dr. Shilpa Saxana. Dr. Saxana is a board, oh, just a little oh, bit about your background. I'm going to dive okay, into it. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> just going to talk about how amazing you are for a second. <laughs> so Dr. Saxana is a board certified family physician in our Tampa location with over 15 years of integrative medicine experience. She serve, serves on the faculty at the Institute for Functional Medicine and is a fellow of the Arizona Center for Integrative Medicine. Previously, Dr. Saxana served as CEO for her Seva Med Institute practice and she's internationally known for her contributions to the lifestyle-based group medical appointment model. She also served on the faculty at George Washington's University Department of Clinical Research and Leadership and founded the Center for Living Wellness and was chief of medicine for the N1 Health Physician Network. Now, welcome Dr. Saxana. I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Hello, no everyone. Worries. Thank you so much for joining us. It's gonna be a wonderful evening full of education, discussion, and hopefully some eye-opening information. So I really wanna acknowledge and thank you for being here because I know evenings are precious and rare and we're gonna make it worth your while. So let's get started. So as Nicole said, we're gonna be talking about why detoxing is critical to jumpstart your weight loss, okay? There's a lot of words in there and I'm gonna break it down for you here. So the first thing that I wanna just call out is that although when some of us look at the excess fat we might have in our body and we might you know, call it certain things like muffin top or baby tie or whatever, it's more than just an aesthetic problem. Now for you, you might be here because it's an aesthetic problem, it's a vanity problem, but I just want you to know on the backside of that excess fat, that fat is like an endocrine organ. It's spewing out information to the rest of your body. And what signal is it sending out? It is blowing up the inflammation alarm. The more you have, especially in the midsection, what we sometimes call apple obesity or having an apple body shape, kind of like Santa Claus, that is just putting out this constant signal of inflammation. Now, what's the big deal about inflammation? Well, think of it like a fire and you can have a small pilot light like you do for maybe your gas stove or your fireplace. That amount of inflammation is fire, is fine. But if your fire starts getting bigger, then this fire creates smoke and residue and damage. And then it's up to your body to get rid of that garbage, which we call detoxification. So if you've got this excess fire and then you're putting a burden on your body to have to get rid of all the burnt damage, if you will, it's going to be the beginnings or what we'll call the root cause of many chronic diseases. Now, just to make sure we're all on the same page, chronic means any condition or set of symptoms, or maybe it's a full out disease that's been with you for longer than a few days or a few weeks. So here's some examples autoimmune conditions, arthritis, tendinitis, like those things can last, diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, like think of things that you don't just recover from in a matter of days or weeks, okay? So if you have too much fat, that means you have more fire and you're putting a burden on the waste management system. We'll call that the detoxification system. 
And because you don't, if you're making more garbage and you're not getting it out, that's going to be the beginnings or the root cause of a lot of the conditions you think are genetic. So by the way, did you know that 80% of the chronic diseases that we see are fueled by inflammation? And inflammation, most of the time, is because of some choice you're making every single day that you don't even know is fueling or stoking that fire. All right, so why detox? Because it's critical. Now, critical meaning you got to take the garbage out. Just imagine if in your own house, you never took the garbage out or you didn't take it out as much as you needed to. Bad things happen. You get a stinky house. It might start off in the garage. It then might go to the kitchen. The smell might make it back to your bedroom. Like all parts of your house will start to dysfunction. So it is critical to detox, to properly detoxify any garbage that's building up in your system. And as it relates to weight loss, if you don't get a critical amount of garbage out of your body, it's really tough to make weight loss not only start, but stick. Because we're not interested in a temporary weight loss, we're interested in getting it off and keeping it off. So this is the slide that I want you to just pay attention, okay? Kids, if you have kids on the side or you're looking at your cell phone, turn it off for just a second. This is the magic, why detox and diet must go together. So here's the dealio. When, if you look at the person or the figure on the left side, we've made it a little bit more dramatic. Let's say that person is overweight or obese and all those little colored circles, those are stored toxins, okay? Now, most people would believe that, okay, let me just cut some calories, let me exercise a bit more. And you know what? You would potentially lose some weight. So you see that person went from having you know, a certain amount of green body, and then you can see they slimmed up. But here's the thing. Did you notice that the number of circles, toxic circles, did not go down? Because diet and exercise don't fully remove the toxins that are built up in your body. So here's the problem. Those toxins, your body recognizes as threats. It's like, we don't want this in here. So it's kind of like taking air freshener and trying to mask the smell of the garbage in your stinky house. It's not a great long-term solution. It's more important that you get rid of that built up toxic burden because this is what happens. If you do not get rid of those toxins, your body is like, listen, if you're not gonna get rid of them, then I gotta protect you from them. So it starts to hold on to fat as a way of sequestering or diluting or just putting like it aside and shielding your rest, the rest of your body from it. So said differently, if you do not detoxify, the fat that you lose will come right back on because it's going to be put back on to protect you from those toxins, okay? So why we don't want that is because if you've ever, you know, tried to lose weight and you kept rebounding and then you are like, woo, I'm losing weight. Oh, I can't lose weight. Woo. It's, it's all because of that stored toxic burden that you haven't effectively gotten out of your system. So what do you got to do? Not only do you want to do the proper diet exercise program, but you need to detoxify properly, okay? Because it's not just like a simple process. It's a beautiful process that the body has created, but that if you're gonna do an effective program, you gotta honor all the steps that the body intended you to use to get rid of those toxic circles. So that when you lose the green part of the fat, and you lose some of those toxic circles, you see the body doesn't feel compelled to have to go get more fat to protect you. It's like, oh, that's okay. Now, I wanna tell you realistically, it's not gonna be a time in your life where you're all green and no circles, okay? It's just the natural way of things that you're gonna have some toxins in you. But most people who have difficulty losing weight, they tend to have more of these toxins build up and built up, and that's why they can't get it to come off or get it to stay off. All right, if you have more questions about that, remember to ask your questions in that question feature on your dashboard. 
Let's tell you some more things. So now, hopefully I haven't scared you, but maybe piqued your curiosity. So the next question you might be asking is like, uh, what are these toxins you keep talking about? It sounds real dangerous. And maybe what you start to think about is like, oh yeah, I remember I used to, you know, I was born in Queens, New York, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, there was probably pollution. That's what she means. Well, yeah, toxins are anything foreign to the body. So, you know, I'll give you some examples here in a second. But the other thing to know is toxins can build up just from you inside your own body, from the body doing its own normal, healthy processes. So for instance, if you went out to go make a healthy meal and you went to the grocery store and you got all organic everything, and then you brought it into the house and then you cooked that meal up, you would still have trash in your garbage bin, okay? So even a healthy body still generates toxins, specifically these fat soluble toxins that stay in the body. You have to still, even when you're being healthy, detoxify regularly. So people like myself and people who are kind of in this scientific know, we detox regularly throughout the year, also based on how dirty we've been, if you will. So if I've been traveling a lot, eating out a lot, I'm more likely to detoxify earlier. So the thing that I want you to remember here is that those are, those are two different kinds of ways you can get toxins in. And the way we differentiate those, I mean, I'm getting really medical, but you're gonna sound real smart at the next cocktail party that you're talking about. Toxicants are the things that are from outside your body. And the word toxins is the stuff, the garbage that's generated in your body. Now, for the sake of just being normal and talking layperson, I'm going to use the word toxins to cover both of them. Okay. But just so you know, the big key pearl here is that things from inside your body can even generate garbage. It's not always just ugly stuff from the outside world. And I want to say this because people have this, I don't know if it's a rationalization technique, but they'll sometimes say like, oh, well, pollution is everywhere. Everybody's exposed to pollution. Or yeah, a lot of people had parents who smoked when they were younger. It's true, just because something is common, I get that there's a need to say like, oh, so it can't be that bad. But what I'm here to tell you scientifically and medical, medically is just because it's common doesn't mean it's safe and that it's not gonna do you any harm. I always kind of have you think like this. If your great grandmother or your great grandmother were alive today, would she recognize most of the things that you are putting on your body or what you have done or what's in this world? Likely not. She grew up in an environment that was much cleaner. She ate food that was probably naturally organic because a lot of these food industry uh, ingredients hadn't come along. She wasn't, you know, in the bathroom with 17 personal hygiene products. You know, these kinds of things weren't around. So things have really changed in history. So we can't keep using that logic, okay? We can't use the logic that, oh, it's common, so it means it's okay. Mm -mm. What we're seeing is huge epidemics of disease, obesity, diabetes, mental health, Alzheimer's. And I want you to know the root cause of it has something to do with toxins, at least in partial respect. So let's just go through a list of some of the things that could be in your body. Now, this, this artwork is pretty dramatic here, right? Like this is what you're thinking pollution might be, or excuse me, toxins might be. Well, it's true. Your environment for sure can contribute to your total toxic burden. So whether it's pesticides on your food or pollution that you've inhaled over the years, you know, if you travel on airplanes, it could be jet fuel. It could be the pest control that is sprayed outside your home, cigarette smoke. But I want you to think a little further. I want you to think what else could be toxic that I have exposure to all the time? Well, a big one that people don't think of is mercury. So if you've ever had silver fillings, I mean, you probably have to be a certain age to have gotten silver fillings. But if you have those, those are made of mercury. And it also you're a certain age, you might remember that when you got cuts when you were young, there was this red paint that your mom or dad might have put on your cut that had mercury in it. It's called mercurochrome. Or if you decided at some point in your life, I really like seafood or it's a part of your culture, certain seafood has a higher mercury content and that stuff builds up in your body. 
and it does not come out easily. You have to purposefully do certain things to make that stuff come out. I don't even want to tell you how many chemicals are in your personal hygiene products. Now, I'm not telling you not to use hairspray or you know, toothpaste that has certain flavors, but I just want you to know it counts as part of your total toxic burden. It might be in your job, like maybe you run a company where you're outside operating machinery, or maybe you have a hobby. Back in the day, for those of you, again, who are old enough, photography, like when you used to be in that dark room and dunk the photos, or maybe you did it in school with art class, or maybe you used to run behind the deep mosquito spray because that was the hobby for the kids to run behind that truck, you were being exposed to fat soluble toxins that could still be in your body today. It could also be from the new carpet that you just got. These VOCs, those are toxins. It could be from just the food that you eat. If you're not cleaning your food or if you don't have clean enough food, all that stuff builds up. And I'm not trying to be a, a negative Nelly, if you will. I'm just trying to be a scientist to let you know this is the garbage that's coming in. So does everyone have toxic buildup? Yes, to varying degrees. So if you're somebody who is trying to lose weight and you're struggling, or if you have a chronic disease and you don't wanna to have to take medications for it or you just don't feel well, it could very well be because not only do you need to lose weight, but you need to detox and get that toxic burden out of your system. So almost like you can think of it, like your, your house is ventilated, like the garbage was taken out to the curb and it's out of your body so that your house can function well. Because if you don't take it out to the curb, if you don't process it, bag it up, take it out to the curb and have the garbage man take it out, then it's stuck in you. And whether it goes in the fat in your belly or the fat in your breasts or the fat in your brain or the fat in your bones or the fat in your nerves, all in your legs, those all will then start to irritate and make those systems of your body not work very well, okay? So we want to get it out. So the point that I want to make sure you get is most of the environmental burden of toxins is still in you and it is being guarded by fat because it's trying to keep from harming you. It's trying to sequester and dilute it, okay? So the question is, what can we do about that? Well, we use the word detox. That's kind of a layperson word. It's short for detoxification. In medical terms, we might see if you're looking up stuff, the word we use is conjugation or biotransformation. I'm just putting it out there that the word detox is just a shortened word for something that truly does happen in the body. Medically speaking, it is a necessary aspect of your body being healthy to properly detoxify. So I'm sure I'm not the first person telling you about a detox program, or maybe the first person who has told you what kinds of things could be in a good detox. In fact, if you travel health food stores or you're on some social media, you are probably being um, solicited for detoxification programs. And if you are, I want you to consider these concepts as what you wanna think about for an effective detox program. Now, obviously the one that we're creating is going to meet all this criteria because, you know, for me as a physician who's actually trying to heal people, reverse disease, get people to lose weight, feel good, have energy, I'm not just interested in somebody doing a detox. I'm interested in somebody doing it to achieve the goal that they're interested in. You know, there's no point in doing something if you're not going to get a result. So a great effective detox program should be proven and safe based on modern medical science, but also proven and safe in ancient medical practices or historical evidence is what we call it. So you want the stuff that meets both check marks, like modern doctors say this is legit, and even whole systems-based ancient practitioners would say that's legit, that it takes care of these things, right? And what I would tell you is it's very rare to find physicians who are trained in both, so they can tell you it meets both criteria. So, you know, the reason why when Nicole said my um, credentials is important, hopefully to you is, 
you want to have something that's not going to interfere with your pharmaceuticals or with another issue that you're already dealing with. You want a modern allopathic doctor to have checked that out. And then you want someone who's not just going to be thinking pharmaceutical, 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 but really is interested in getting you off of the pharmaceutical and getting you to lose weight and getting you to feel well, like all of that. And that only comes if you're trained in both fields. So it's really important to me as an MD that I get results. Because when I go out on a leg and say, is it out on a branch? Oop. English is not my first language. So sometimes I try to be really cool and use an idiom. And I don't know if I had said it right. So I think it's go out on a ledge. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. You want to make sure, like for me as an MD, that if I'm going to put my neck out there and say this detox program works, I have results and data to back it up. So just so you know, we have been doing this detox program in my medical practice for over 10 years. So I have lab reports and I have real patients who have shown me over the years, like, this is the right thing. Why don't you tweak it this way? And of course I've made it safe because I don't like hurting people. That's not my job. It's to heal people. It's really important to me as well when I'm putting, like when we're really doing an effective detox, not just a fun little cleanse, I'm talking about an effective, full comprehensive detox. You need to use the right supplements. So, you know, going to one of these big box stores and getting supplements, you may not have the degree of purity and potency in them. So then you can't blame the detox. You've got to consider that the supplements weren't adequate, okay? And then the other thing that I know for sure is you can know everything, but to do programs, you need support. You need people. It's not just here's the supplement, here's the directions. I mean, that might work for less than 10% of people, most people will have questions that come up. So that's part of an effective detox program is to make sure that you have support along the way. And so for that reason, most detox programs that you're looking at are likely incomplete. They're not reducing inflammation. They're not repairing what we call the microbiome, which is your gut lining, which is the root of a lot of inflammation in the body that causes fat. Most detox programs do not replace nutrients sufficiently because when you detox, it takes up a lot of energy to get that garbage out. So you've got to make sure that you're replacing nutrients in to heal the areas that you've pulled the garbage out of. Okay. And that means that you've got to give all the nutrients to the liver, which is the main organ for detoxification. And then when the liver bags up the trash that's in your body, you got to make sure you take that out to the curb. And that's code for you got to make sure you poop. And why is that so important? If the liver bags up everything, you've got all the supplements for the liver, but you never take the trash out to the curb, it's still in you, in your house, in trash bags. And that's not useful because at some point, the body is going to rip the trash bag off and that toxic stuff will just get back in your body. That's a, a waste of time, energy, money. The other thing that's really important to me, working with people from all backgrounds. So, I mean, I've worked in an underserved area. I've worked with people who I would call intellectual academics, people who are short on time, people who have all the time in the world, all of them. We've put through this program and made it so that it's easy to follow and easy to put into any lifestyle. And the reason we do it is because we want to reduce any mental and physical stress impact because we know that, you know, while you're doing this, you still have your other responsibilities and desires and passions. So what we want to also do is we don't want to make the detoxification like a depletion, like a, oh my God, this is so draining. We want to simultaneously increase your energy so that you're like, I love this detox. I love feeling like I'm cleaning myself out. I'm losing weight. My brain's working better. My skin looks better. All that stuff is happening. So when we talk about the supplements that we have in our program, or if you're going to look at another program, I want you to make sure that you're getting the right nutrient and that it's in the right combination so that you know things are happening in the right order and that it's pure because there's oh, 10 to 20% of supplements that are found at kind of these discount vitamin retailers, they are counterfeit. And when I say counterfeit, it may not just be a, a filler. It could be something toxic that's in there. That would kind of be counterproductive. You not only want the right stuff, you want it at the right strength. 
in addition to being pure, and then you wanna give it at the right times. Like for instance, we know that the liver is most active at night, so it's important that we make sure the nutrients get into the body at night at least. So when you do this like next level medical grade detox, you're gonna improve your immune system, which at any time is good to have, and especially these days, you're gonna reduce inflammation, which is the root cause of feeling bad and a lot of symptoms and diseases. You're gonna lose fat, of course. You're gonna get healthier digestion. You may also identify some foods that were triggering inflammation, which remember, makes you hold on to fat as well. You're gonna be detoxifying, so your skin's gonna look healthy. It's gonna, it's gonna get less ruddy, less red, less puffy. You're gonna start noticing, oh, when I'm taking the trash out, my head doesn't hurt. And my head's not foggy and I actually have more energy. And those toxins, they hold on to water and they make you bloat. So all that starts to improve when you have an effective medical grade detox in action. So again, the energy portion is so critical because who wants to do something that just drags you down? And in the end, of course, the reason you're on this call is because you wanna make sure there's some weight loss associated with it. And I'm gonna just say one other thing. We don't want you to lose weight. We want you to lose fat, okay? Because we don't want you to lose muscle. I don't want you to lose necessary water in your body. We want you to lose fat. So many detoxes or cleanses, they might make you lose weight, but if all you did was eat up your muscle, that's not good for sustaining weight loss long-term. So our program is rich in proteins to make sure you don't starve yourself and that you keep your muscle because that's what's gonna keep that weight off long-term as well. And I'm gonna say this and it's so obvious, like most of you probably know a lot of things that you could be doing to improve your health or your life, but knowing something and doing something are two totally different things. So this program is complete with both. It's not like, here's your kit, good luck, have fun. It is all the knowing part, with master classes, coaching support, you know, this curriculum that's been tried and true for over 10 years. And, and like I said, we, got the, we have those coaches and the resources to really convert you from knowing into doing, because knowing something isn't gonna get you results, it's doing it, right? I know that sounds so obvious, but I can't tell you how many people miss that. So here's the truth, great things never came from comfort zones. So it's gonna take something for you to commit to doing anything that's different than what you're doing right now. And I get it. And I acknowledge that you're open to looking at it. And what we say to you, when you're willing to take that chance to be a little uncomfortable, to try something new, what we wanna let you know is that the program that I've created is proven. And it's proven because I've made it easy to follow, easy to do, something you can just put into your regular lifestyle relatively easy. We've got all these resources, like if you don't know what to eat, you know, all this is made easy for you through years of working with all types of patients. The proven supplements are included in the program fee because I don't want you to have to be in the middle of a health food store, like looking at the aisles, trying to figure out, is this pure? Is this potent? Is this the right one? That's going to cause you stress. Then we've got the coaching support built in. You have daily access on a private Facebook group to be able to ask questions to our coaches that are like brilliant on making sure they can help you convert into doing and troubleshoot with you. And then we have the master classes weekly with a live Q and A with our coaches. So we're really putting together something that has made a difference for thousands of patients and we just wanna see if that's something that would be interesting to you because this is the time of year where everybody's up to something bigger in their life and we're just excited to be able to give you another choice in the matter. So thanks so much for being patient as I went through all that science. Let's open it up for some discussion. So Nicole, any questions that we have gathered while I have been chatting? Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Saxena. That's such great info. So now we're opening opening it up to questions from our audience. We've had a lot of great questions come in so far. Just to reiterate, you can at, continue to ask us questions using the question tab in the dashboard. So our first question is from Mark and uh, just a little bit, bit of background info. So part of the detox is the elimination diet in addition to the supplement. So the elimination diet is removing most common food allergens. Uh, and he asks, what can you not have or why can you not have caffeine during the detox? 
Hmm. Good question. Now, listen, this is a negotiation thing that we hear of all the time. The reason why is because caffeine uses up a lot of trash bags. So it's not that you can't have it. It just slows down the rate of getting the garbage out because it's just uses up trash bags that you'd maybe rather use for something that's built up. So the way that I describe it is like if you're trying to clean your house and do a real full spring cleaning, you wouldn't have a, simultaneously have a party in your house making new trash. So caffeine, alcohol, you know, some of these processed foods that you might find that meet all of our check marks, but they have other chemicals in them. They're just adding to your garbage load. And if you're net trying to get rid of garbage, don't add it in. Now, are you going to like completely blow your detox if you add caffeine in? No, it's just going to make it potentially a little bit less impactful. That makes sense. Minimizing garbage in, maximizing garbage out. That's right. Awesome. Next question from Barb. What symptoms will I experience as I detox? Great question. So this is what happens when, the, when that garbage, this is how I describe it. Let's say you have a dirty, dirty closet. Okay, a big, dirty walk-in closet. So consider that your body. Okay. And then you say, I'm going to clean this closet. I'm going to get some of this junk out of here because it just irritates me to be in this closet. So when you first start moving things out of the closet, I don't know about you, but I tend to like pull it out and I put it in a pile in the bedroom, right? Because I'm, I'm going to sort through it later. And sometimes after I'm done pulling everything out, like it might've taken me two and three hours to get the stuff out. And then when I look at that pile, I kind of feel like, ugh. So that ugh feeling that the body will experience is maybe a little bit of fatigue, maybe a little headache, maybe a little nausea, but something like, I don't know if you've ever like had a cold coming on and you can kind of tell like, oh, I don't feel good like that. But you are not going to be bedridden. You are not going to be married to a toilet bowl, nothing like that. Like you will be fully functional. You just maybe won't feel as good. And what happens is, is when that pile of clothing and junk that's in the closet is slowly bagged up and taken out and you put the good stuff back in, i.e. The, the shakes and the supplements that we're giving simultaneously, that energy comes back within a week. So the first few days you might feel this, not everybody feels it, depends on how dirty a closet is. The first few days you might feel it, but by the end of a week, you're gonna be feeling like how you would when you walk into a cleaned out closet. Awesome. That's definitely something we've seen time and time again as health coaches. And the coaches that you'll be working with give you a ton of awesome tips to minimize those symptoms as well. So you'll be fully supported there. Uh, question from Julie. Is this program okay for cancer patients who need to limit sugar and carbs that feed cancer? Absolutely. So there is no part of this diet that says have tons of sugar and have tons of carb. This whole process is actually very good for patients who are having extra cancer risk, whether you're trying to prevent it or if you've had it. I would advise that if you're actively getting cancer treatment like chemotherapy, that you probably want to work with your like a form health provider to maybe tweak it. That's only if you're getting active chemotherapy, like infusions type of thing. But other than that, this is one of the things we do to help people who've had cancer prevent recurrence because it just supports the ability to get the toxins out, which can promote cancer or what we call dysplasia, meaning atypical cells. And fat, excess fat, actually creates signals that make things grow. So toxins make the cells abnormal and then fat and inflammation makes them grow. So we we actually take care of both of those things in an effective detox program like ours. Awesome, that's really good to know. Our next question is from Martha. She's wondering about the supplements. So what are the medical grade supplements in the program? Can you describe the ingredients and kind of give us a little bit of background on what those are providing? So I, I wouldn't go into every single ingredient that there is because that's going to be a little too cumbersome and I don't have it memorized, but I'm going to tell you the general information about them. So the way that I have made this program relatively simple, and when I say idiot proof, it's because I am like the big idiot that had to figure it out because I am the worst patient. So if I can do it, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do it. So what we did was, number one, the supplements that are the majority of the work are in these shakes, vanilla or chocolate. And then 
what those proteins are that are in there, they're anti-inflammatory and they're hypoallergenic. So they're not going to create more garbage. In fact, the proteins are pre-digested and when they go into your body just in the form of a chocolate shake, basically, they are healing up the gut lining. They're getting in through the gut lining into your bloodstream. They are the trash bags that are just bagging up the toxins. And then what we couple that with are some capsules that are even extra trash bags and maybe a capsule that you would need to be able to make sure that you are a, a super pooper. Now, I don't mean like a diarrhea kind of super pooper. I mean, super pooper like every day, whatever you bag up has to go into the toilet bowl and get out of your body. So the supplements are designed to reduce garbage in, increase the trash bags and improve the elimination. So we wanna detox and eliminate while we give all the nutrients in a form that can be absorbed. So here's one of my pearls, okay? You don't get credit for what you swallow. You get credit for what you absorb. So you can take poor grade supplements that have tons of fillers and are like in tablet form that cannot get digested. And all you have is expensive poop. If it doesn't get broken down and digested and absorbed, it never made it into your bloodstream to be able to heal and trash up the and bag up the trash. So our supplements are designed for people who may not have the best guts, because that's a lot of Americans, by the way. They're pre-digested, so that work doesn't have to be done. And that means more energy for you not having to work on breaking those things down. They just naturally come in and go into the system. So the ingredients tend to be anti-allergenic, anti-inflammatory, pre-digested, and they're full of nutrients that you don't have to take like 17 capsules of and nothing is about being married to a toilet bowl because i know that the word detox or cleanse can conjure up feelings of like oh i won't be able to do anything i'll be on the toilet bowl all the time not at all love that the supplements are an incredible part of the program many of our patients continue on one shake per day is more of like a maintenance program just because of how great they feel in the supplements and you know dr six and i live by our daily shake so Excited for you guys oh, to try you know, those. Nicole, you brought up a very good point. One of the other things that people will do is that these shakes are filling. So people will also use them as meal replacements. Now that's not to say you can't eat more. Like let's say you're exercising while you're doing this and you wanna eat food. Um, one of the tricks of this program, and again, it was based on patients like myself and regular people, is they don't wanna have to figure out three meals every day to eat that are part of the elimination diet. So what I was able to do was have a shake for breakfast and a shake for lunch. And then all I had to do was come up with some easy snacks. And all I had to do was figure out dinner. And I wanted to eat a dinner. Like by the time the dinner time came, my snacks and my shake, they were great. They were light, they were easy. But I only had to figure out one meal every day that had to follow the, you know, the elimination diet. And then I had recipes and menus and shopping guides for me to be able to do it. And then we have our coaches available based on any dietary restrictions you have, like you might be vegetarian or allergic to whatever, they'll help you with some ideas on that. So it's kind of, again, idiot proof in that the shakes do a lot of the work and they work as meals too. So in terms of money, you can also think of it as what you would be paying against a meal that you would be buying any other day of the month. That's such a great point. Once you get into the routine of it, it actually makes life more simple is what yeah. the feedback that we get a lot. Mm -hmm. Awesome, ton of great questions coming in. So the next one is from Chris. So if you can't have caffeine, is decaf coffee or tea fine on the program? Absolutely. You can, add, and that's what we, people many times just want that hot cup of coffee to smell. Decaf, all the way, all good. Herbal teas, very good. And, you know, listen, if you need like a cup of coffee on a certain day, again, it's not going to sabotage your entire detox. It's just that the more you do it, then the more it sets you back a little bit, but it doesn't sabotage the whole detox. So I, the other thing that's big about my style of this is I'm not super, super rigid about every aspect of this detox. It's just a conversation. Like how much do you want to get out of it? It's, it's what you're willing to put into it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Our next one is from Norm. How much fat weight can I expect to lose by the end of the detox? It's a great question. I, I need to tell you, I'm not psychic. I wish I was. It would just make for a killer business for me. But well, what I will tell you is 
that people will lose, like, you know, depending on your frame, you might lose five, 10 pounds. We have people who lose 30 to 40 pounds in a month. Now, again, it depends on the degree of weight that you have and how much of that is related to toxins. But I'm telling you, people will lose significant weight and they will lose the fat and they will lose the, the water that's kind of not in your blood vessels. It's kind of what makes you swollen looking, makes your ankles swollen and puffy. That water weight will also come out because toxins use water to dilute themselves as well too. So Nicole, I don't know what your experience is, but I would say anywhere from five to 35 pounds on average. I'd which say is that's incredible. a good average. Yeah. And, and the cool thing is, and this was in my case as well, is people continue to lose weight afterwards because they took care of those, those chronic underlying conditions. So for me personally, I lost 26 pounds total with the program. And most of that was during the five weeks, but then I continued to, to lose that afterwards too. So yeah, 26 pounds. I mean, you know, and Nicole, like I will tell you that I used to be 128 pounds and for me, I lost 10 pounds and that put me at 118, but that is a significant percentage of my weight. And what I recognize is that when I have those shakes every morning, it curbs my appetite and it maintains my blood sugar. So this, let me just say this other thing, like this program for many people supports disease reversal. So what, what I mean is like, you might have a blood pressure problem that when you get rid of these toxins and that excess weight, your blood pressure will potentially not require medication. So as you heal, you may not need some of the pharmaceuticals or you know band-aids that you've been using for your symptoms or disease. And that's where our coaches can help you too, to just say, hey, you probably need to talk to your doctor about getting off that blood pressure medicine and you don't need it anymore, or your thyroid might be corrected or your autoimmunity might be corrected. That's actually a great segue into our next question from Penny. So she's asking about conflicts with the detox program while taking prescription medications or other supplements? Great question. So again, this is why I always say, if you could use a effective um, detox program that's run by a physician that basically has been created by a physician who's used to dealing with people on prescriptions, then that's just another layer of effectiveness and safety that you're looking at. So we have taken that into account and our coaches are trained to know which medications might require a little um, alteration of your program. But in the signup materials, we will list the ones that don't qualify. But to be uh, quick about it, it's if you're on chemotherapy or if you're on a medication that needs to be kept at a very tight level, like seizure medications, some seizure medications, like you can't let it dip below a certain point and you can't, it's really that you can't make it dip below because here's the other thing I'm gonna tell you. When you detoxify, your body considers your pharmaceuticals garbage. So the pharmaceuticals will come in and they'll do their job, but it'll clear it out. So for some people on seizure medicines, or maybe you have a heart rhythm problem. So if you're on something like amiodarone that really controls your heart rate, not your blood pressure, but your heart rate, that might be something. And if you're not sure, you can just um, message Nicole here on the chat and write your um, medication that might be in that category. And we can hopefully get you that answer. Perfect. Uh, oh, I need to say one other thing. Oh, can I say one other Go thing? Ahead. Sure. You do not want to get pregnant while you're detoxing. Okay. So the other thing that we would require you to do is not get pregnant because you don't want to detox your junk into an unborn child. That's where it would go. So really important that if you're um, on contraception, you would probably need to use another method of contraception on top of it because we, we might be detoxing off your contraception. We do it all the time and we've worked with women in the reproductive age group, but I just want to remind you, detoxes will make your body healthy. And for reproductive age women, that might make your hormones operate so much better. And your hormones are designed to make you make babies as one function. So that is, it's not a reason not to do it. It just means that we have to give you a little bit of extra guidance on how to get the garbage out, but not into a new baby. Super important. For the next question, I'm going to combine two questions, just kind of touching on the difference between the 10 day and the five week. So 
Trisha's asking, she's not interested in losing weight, but she has an arthritis problem. Would the 10 day or the five week be right for her? And then Joanne is asking if the five week program should be done first, if they've never done a detox before. She's overweight, but would like to try the 10 day detox. So, and just in terms of like prior conditions and weight loss, what should people look at in, in deciding what program to choose? All right, I'm gonna be really frank with you here because I'm just gonna say it straight and then you get to make your big girl or big boy decision about this. When I do this for my patients, there's only a five week option. The only time I offer the 10 day option is during the holidays when they wanna get started, but they don't wanna do something for the whole month of December. Because if you've never really done an effective detox, you've got your lifetime's worth of junk in you. And it takes at least four or five weeks to get a critical mass of it out. So for any for anybody who has a, a condition that ends with um, itis, like arthritis, right? That is an inflammatory condition. So if you wanna get that inflammation down, remember that's one of the benefits of this program. So if you do it for 10 days, I call that the appetizer version. I think that's really reserved for people who've already been relatively clean. They just wanna do another one that's, you know, just gonna jumpstart whatever goal, feeling better, having more energy, losing that last little couple of pounds, that's fine for the 10 day. It, 10 day might also be good for you if you're overly cautious and you just wanna inch into it, do 10 day. But if you're really up to getting something effectively done, I would tell you lean five week. I mean, it's just like anything else. Like if you wanna do anything big, you gotta put a little bit more time into it because you got a lifetime worth of garbage to get rid of. Awesome. Yeah, I've done the five week twice and I, that's the one I personally recommend. I love it. So I'm but really good advice. So Nicole, uh, let me just say what I've been doing for 10 years. So I did the five week. I do the five week once a year and then I do 10 days every four to six months to re like to reboot what I did at the you know month that I did the detox. So it's because it's not like you don't clean your AC filters out once a year, right? You do it quarterly because they just get gunked up from regular life. You don't have to be a dirty house in order to need your AC filters changed. Even a clean house needs AC filters changed. So again, if you've never done an effective detox, start with the five week and then use the 10 days as things that you repeat over time. So I can't tell you how many five weeks I've done. It's not like it's one and done because it's not like new garbage doesn't come in. But I'm telling you, I love doing my detoxes in the sense of I'm excited about how I'm going to feel afterwards. For sure. And the cool part is seeing countless patients go through this is once you've done the five week or the 10 day, you have the tools and the knowledge to go back and you know how to get back to that awesome, clean, energized feeling yeah. again. So it's, yeah, it's definitely something to, to consider doing regularly. All right, Melissa is asking what a typical day looks like on the detox program as far as food, supplements, and shakes. So what can people expect? Great question. So the way that my detox uh, day looks like, and I think it's probably similar to many people, is you start with a shake. That shake could be as simple as the two scoops of powder. I do unsweet almond milk with a little bit of ice. I'll actually put a shot of decaf espresso in there. And then if I'm feeling particularly hungry or you know wanting something special, I might put a little scoop of almond butter in there. I blend that up. And that's only because I'm not, I'm lazy. I'm not gonna put the fruits in and the vegetables in, but listen, all the power to you if you like doing that kind of stuff. I'm kind of a keep it simple, stupid kind of person. So I do that, I blend that up, I take it with me to work. And what I pack up in my lunchbox is some hummus, carrot sticks, cucumbers, zucchini, squash. Sometimes I'll have a little bit of leftover dinner as my you know, little snack. Many times I'm completely full from breakfast and I don't need a snack, but I have it there just because it makes me feel good. Then I would have a second shake for lunch. So what I did, because I do these all the time, is, is I actually take my blender with me to work and I have a second one there at work. Now you can also just shake up another one at the office because we um, also have these shaker cups that you just put the two scoops in with your milk and water and then you shake it up and you just drink it. And then again, you would maybe have another snack. Again, we have a list of great snack ideas for you. Now, if you think like, oh, I just worked out this morning, you could pack a regular lunch that's coming from the list. Definitely a lot of things to choose from. Then you come home and you make yourself what people might call a sensible dinner. And then if you have cravings, I sometimes will have a one scoop shake 
at night to equal my dessert because these things actually taste really good. The reason why people have been doing this program for so long is because I found the ingredients that actually make the shake taste good. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not like a sugary, like, uh, you know, it's not like a sugary shake. So, you know, if you're interested, if, if you're used to that, it's not gonna taste like that, but it tastes pretty darn close. People really come to like those shakes. I've been taking one a day for the last 10 years, most days of my life, because it makes me feel so good. So that's what a typical day looks like in terms of the shakes. And then in terms of the capsules, you take two capsules of extra trash bags with each shake. And then if you need um, support to go to the bathroom, like if you're not a good pooper, then we advise you to take something at bedtime related to helping you eliminate all the trash that you bagged up during the day. So Nicole, I think that's kind of what a day looks like for me. How about for you and other people that you take care of? Uh, very similar. Yeah, so I normally have a shake for breakfast as meal replacement. I like to make some frozen fruit, some greens, a little bit of nut butter to make it more filling, substantial. I usually just snack on nuts and seeds. I'm kind of boring that way. I'm fine with repetitive meals. Uh, lunch is typically chicken, avocado, some veggies. I actually like frozen organic vegetables from Costco. And so I just like, I'll steam some of those, just make it simple. Um, yeah, I typically have another shake for a mid afternoon snack. And then dinner is just kind of more of the same, usually some salmon, some sort of veg, um, either olive oil or avocado as a fat. If I get hungry in the evening, um, you are allowed some dark chocolate. So if it's 70% cocoa or above, so I'll have a small piece of dark chocolate and um, yeah, call it good. That's, that's know, a typical day for me. One of the other things that we'll tell you is, is that we're not like super like uh, restricting your calories. Obviously, like for example, rice is something that you're allowed to have on this elimination diet. Now, if you're eating six cups of rice a day, you're not gonna get the best um, result with your weight loss, but it, you will still detox very effectively. So the one thing that we tell you is this is not like a starvation or caloric restriction based diet. It's really taking away foods that cause garbage and inflammation, right? So just exactly. if that's in your head, we're not restricting your calories. You'll notice like you're allowed to snack, you're allowed to eat. We just ask that you eat and snack from a certain list of foods that we know are healing and don't worsen your detox problem. It's so cool to see people for the first time begin to trust their bodies and realize that they don't have to starve to lose weight. I think that's the most gratifying part for me to see people be like, I'm never hungry. I feel full and satisfied. I'm eating amazing foods and my metabolism is, is, is high and I'm losing weight. So, it's... And you know, Nicole, don't we always notice that um, it's not uncommon for us to hear like, these shakes are so filling, do I have to eat? There's a yeah, lot of people yeah. who ask, do I have to eat? And I'm like, you don't have to, the shakes have everything that you need. Um, but psychologically, you know, people wanna eat something at times. Or, you know, if you're like a, we have people who are high endurance athletes that, you know, eat a lot. And then we have people like me that I just get full on the shake. And I just bring the hummus and carrots because my mind tells me I should eat something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, some people just appreciate that. Uh, and then just another question on the shakes. So are they the shakes and supplements suitable for vegetarian and are they gluten-free? Yes and yes. Awesome, perfect. Uh, and then we're just gonna wrap up with two more questions. So one more on the shake. So can you mix fruit with the shakes? Kind of answered that with my question or with my answer to a typical day, you can mix fruits. There's a, oranges really and high glycemic fruits are the ones you want to stay away from. Um, but, you know, berries are a good all option. about that in the guide. That's all on the ingredient list. And we give you smoothie recipes as well to make it interesting. That's where Nicole and her team who are foodies have made it like possible for foodies to not feel restricted on this. Exactly. And also on the kickoff call, we'll be outlining in a ton of details, tips and tricks, you know, what typical days look like, meal ideas, all that. So you, you guys will all be getting that on that Sunday kickoff call. And then last question from Peter, with COVID-19 being a big deal right now, what does the de or does doing the detox weaken your immune system at all? Absolutely not. In fact, it will increase your immune system. The ingredients in the shakes and in the liver support supplements that I have 
boost your immune system. So see, when you have excess fat and you have toxins, that impairs your immune system. So by getting rid of them, you will actually have a strengthened immune system and not just strengthened, but smarter. So it is not unusual for patients who have autoimmune conditions to actually start noticing like, oh, my joints aren't as swollen. Oh, my psoriasis went away. Oh, my you know, hair isn't falling out. So not only does it make your immune system stronger, it makes it smarter as well too, is what we see. Awesome. All right, well, that's about all the time that we have. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sixana, for your time and expertise. Well, thank you everyone for your time. We'd love to see you in our group calls and hope you have a great night. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Hope to see you soon.